Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. In today's installment of the Isopod Care Guide, we'll talk all about feeding and hydrating your isopods. Some isopod species eat some bizarrely specialized foods. Maybe you've heard of a species of isopod, Cymothoa isigua to be precise, that actually parasitizes fish tongues. Another, Pseudolaureola atlantica, is endemic to the island of St. Helena and seems to subsist largely on fern, spores, and pollen. Fortunately, the isopods we keep in the hobby tend to be less specialized. Most hobby isopods will do best if decomposing hardwood leaves and decomposing hardwood make up a large proportion of their diet. This is convenient because these materials also compose a large proportion of their substrate. If you missed the video on isopod substrate, I encourage you to check that out here. But in summary, by providing plenty of pesticide-free fallen hardwood leaves and decomposing hardwood, you are providing a staple food item for your isopods. You'll notice that the leaf litter, and much more slowly, the wood and base substrate you initially added when you started the culture, will disappear over time. So be prepared to top off the leaves in the enclosure as needed. You'll also need to replace the wood and base substrate periodically. More on that in an upcoming video on isopod maintenance. It is possible to keep generations of many species of isopods without adding any additional food items, but there are good reasons for using supplemental foods. One is that most isopods simply tend to breed faster and more prolifically when offered a variety of nutrient-rich foods. Another is that some species of isopods seem to require a significant amount of protein-rich foods. Finally, I'll be honest, it's just fun to watch isopods swarm over the food and nibble it down to nothing within hours. So, in addition to leaf litter and rotting wood, what can you feed your isopods? There are so many options. You can use a food mix intended specifically for isopods, such as Supreme Isopod Chow, or a food marketed for invertebrates including isopods, such as Rapashi Bug Burger. These foods contain various ingredients that help to round out the isopod's diet. I'll put some links down in the description. You can also use small pieces of fruits and vegetables. If you do, wash them well and peel them first, as pesticides can be deadly to your isopods. I offer mine a lot of vegetables that I grow myself without the use of pesticides, but I also use store-bought items. I just peel and wash them, like I said. Some of the foods that I use a lot are sweet potatoes, summer and winter squash, carrots, apple, melon, green beans, mango, and orange. That's by no means an exhaustive list. There are others you can use as well. To prevent mold growth, feed small pieces of food and place them on top of cork bark or leaves rather than on the moss or the base substrate. Remove these pieces of food if they get moldy or preferably before they've even had a chance to get moldy. Protein-based foods are important too. Some of the giant Spanish Porcelio species seem to prefer protein-rich food and don't even eat all that much leaf litter. Others, such as Porcelio lavis, will eat leaf litter and other plant-based foods quite readily, but are also really attracted to protein-rich foods. And other isopods will eat some protein-rich foods, but are simply less voracious about it. I offer all of my isopods some animal protein. In a moment, I want to talk more in detail about protein-rich foods for isopods, but before I do, I want to give a shout out to the Aquarimax Pets patrons. It's difficult for me to express how much your support means to me, but I am truly grateful. And you help keep this channel going. For as little as a dollar a month, patrons help me do more of what I love, which is sharing what I learn about the amazing creatures of this planet with all of you. If you'd like to help, I'll put a link at the end of the video. So now, on to protein-rich foods for isopods. My go-to is fish food pellets. I often use Omega-1 fish food pellets and sometimes other brands, and I'll put links in the description. Fish food pellets are eaten voraciously by most isopods. They're fairly easy to locate and remove when they aren't eaten, so that's kind of a bonus. There are animal protein-based foods marketed specifically for isopods as well. Vivariums in the Mist produces some, like isogrub and isomeal, which are dried minnows and dried mealworms. I've tried them and my isopods go pretty crazy over them as well. So again, check the links. Whenever I buy shrimp with the tails on, I save the chitinous tails for my isopods. 
they usually generate a pretty robust feeding response. You can also buy dried river shrimp, which are sold as turtle or fish food. And isopods tend to like these a lot as well. So again, check the links below. When my snakes shed their skins, I often put the skins in with my isopods and they shred the skins up within hours. But we have two more topics that we need to cover. And the first of these is calcium. Isopods use significant amounts of calcium in their exoskeleton. So there's no doubt that they need a source of calcium. However, they do tend to get quite a bit of calcium from things like leaf litter and fish food pellets. Do we actually need to add even more? Well, Oren McMonagall discusses this topic a bit more in depth in his book, Isopod Zoology, which I highly recommend. But whether they need additional calcium or not, many isopods will readily eat it, and it certainly doesn't seem to do them any harm. Cuttlebone, which is sold as a calcium supplement for birds, is eaten by many isopods as is finely ground eggshell. Those are probably the most commonly offered forms of supplemental calcium for isopods, and there are others that are available as well. So finally, let's talk about hydration. Sometimes people ask me if they need to offer isopods water in a shallow dish, and I tell them, no, please don't. Uh, isopods will often drown themselves when they're offered a water dish. So isopods can hydrate themselves perfectly well if they have a hydration station of just damp substrate. And the best method I have used for doing this, I learned from Wally at Supreme Gecko. You just provide a patch of damp sphagnum moss on one side of the enclosure, as I mentioned in the substrate video. Make sure that moss never dries out by pouring small amounts of water along the sides of the enclosure so that it trickles into the moss. The rest of the enclosure can be somewhat drier, and this allows the isopods to regulate their own moisture needs. As I said before, most hobby isopods are detritivores, so there is quite a variety of foods that they will accept and even thrive on. If your isopods have a favorite food that I didn't mention, let me know what it is in the comments. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.